ever do anything for the librarians and die for them? I wasn't bluffing. For you, your throw. Everybody. Welcome to the channel. We discuss the laws of mind that govern our lives and the one law that we're in now, which is the law of love and grace. And this age has ended and we're in that transition period going from one age to another. And that's what we talk about. And this is all been told to us in the Bible. Uh, and we discover this as we try to go manifest our lives manifest your destiny right that's why that resonated with everyone in america <laughs> go west young man you know and the native american indians were part of that because they had been trashing each other for a very long time and enslaving each other for a very long time so oh you want to be a little shit here you want to meet some shits <laughs> and to the first ones that came, you know, they were all friends and everything. But this is you, the good. The good is always, you know, this is what you got. No, imagine they're all like that. And it'll be like that. They forgot that. You need to forgive and forget. And revision is a way of doing that. And you are a perpetual transmuting machine. You can do it from the past. You can do it to the future. You can set a point that to you seems to happen in the future. But all moments are happening in all times and place, okay? You're supposed to play your role to thine own self be true, you know? If you enjoy gardening then, and not going to tea parties and dressing up, then you go dig in the garden and be happy. And it doesn't matter what the, everybody else says. If you're the best, you know, model out there then you don't listen to everybody else where you need to you know expand you need to go do this if that's what you like to thine own self be true okay and you know don't go following these they're crazy people they're not thinking okay you bless them you forgive them you walk away from them but revision is really Revision is a great tool. It really is. Because the scenes all set up is they're already done. All you have to do is just revise the lines or the blocking. Okay. Now, now you know, I'm gonna revise that. That's that's not what really happened. I know what really happened was this and this and this and this and this and this. It's another form of forgiveness because really you're not supposed to look back. There is no past. There is no future. There's only the presence, the present to us. So the number one thing you can do for yourself is to look yourself in the eyes and say, I love you, you know, and know that everything is working out for your good and say that. I know I'm on a bridge of instance. I know it's all going to work out great. I'll see it when I see it, you know, and you just keep blowing it off. Okay, because that's taking care of business. And the outside world is business. And you don't take your emotions into work. Okay. You don't spread your dirty laundry at work. Home's at home. Business is business. Okay. And that's what the Bible's telling you. So if people are at work or bugging you, so you just take note. You know, keep your mouth shut as much as possible. Go home you know, and leave that outside the door, okay, and then you go find time to sit down, think about it, you know, and determine what your response will be, and no response is a response, acknowledge that it is a response, that I'm not going to respond to that, therefore noting you did not ignore it, you're not sweeping it under the rug, it's no, I'm not responding to that. That has no place here. You know, and the given to Caesar was Caesar's and given to God was God. It, it, that's what it means. You know, they, their business, you know, you give to God all that passion. You don't get that to them. 
And not that they're bad or good, but you don't know. You know, so you, that's why you don't tell anyone because you don't know. You can you think someone's conscious because they're telling you, I'm awake, I'm awake, or whatever, you know, and they're not. They're not. They're still judging. Okay? You don't want to get caught up in their judgments and stuff, you know, so protect yourself, cover your gut, cross your arms, cross your gut. You're not being defensive like objective man would say you are. I'm being defensive and I'm not going to let you know my gut, you know, and I wish you the best. I'm going to appreciate that you're here and you've had a life experience and you're now speaking to me for some reason. So I'm going to admire and appreciate and respect you and listen. You know, but I'm, I'm not necessarily going to believe it just because I listened to it. <laughs> no, I'll make my own judgment. And for most part, it's not even worth thinking about. So the clips I'm using today are uh, from the TV series, The Librarians. And, you know, when you're entering into the final stages of coming to grips with all this, then that's wormwood, you know. And, and what's told to us in Revelations and, to, and Daniel and other prophecies relates to humanity. But because it relates to humanity, it also relates to the individual. And this is what Jesus was teaching, you know, about it took 1,260 days. It like never got it confirmed to us, you know, that that part was actually real. And that's what took place. And that's three and a half years. Right? And so the revelations is telling you, you know, 1,260 days and more, you know, and people think that's going to be some comet that destroys the earth and all this other shit. And it's not. It's not. Okay. It's when the majority of humanity has reached this. Uh, the Monkey King said I could bestow the gift of inner soul. Giving it to you. I have the ability to transport thought. I give you the power of thought. No one needs this love potion more than you. Here, have a heart! she's so beautiful you know she's a perfect expression and I could you know and he fell in love with an object that represents God okay and God came to understand that himself when El Shaddai taught him this is how it is. And it's okay. The human's right here and he loves you. And you scared each other. You know, the human and the imagination. And it was for a purpose. Because the human wanted to be wise like God. And in order for him to be wise like God, well, God had to, to go inside him. And man had to immerse himself into death. Okay, that's what you've been doing, dying and dying and dying and dying and dying. Yeah. Over and over again. So you grab death by the arms. And now there's only light. I know that now. You know, thank you, Father, for giving me your wisdom. You know, you know that everything's perfect because God is perfect. And he's perfect good. And you've been taught the language of the humans. So you use the words that are good. 
okay? Understanding underneath it all. I'm not really young. I'm ageless and timeless, you know? But I look like I'm young when men look at me. You know, I'm beautiful. I'm gorgeous. I'm a perfect expression of God. It's his light shining through me. How can I be anything but beautiful? And everything around me is just, it's beautiful. It's an expression. You have some serious explaining to do. How could you lie to us? You should have told us the plan. We could have helped. Well, that's exactly what we didn't want you to do. You were our failsafe. If we failed and pure evil was released, we'd need you guys as backup. And you, working for Dosa. We knew the only place to battle APEP and make sure pure evil was sealed up once and for all would be inside the library. But battling would mean that countless artifacts could have been destroyed. So, so you needed a safe place to protect the artifacts until it was all over. A facility whose security features rivaled our own. Like one that Dosa had been building all along. Clip. So I hope this helps. Blessings to you. And thank you. Thank you for being here. What? What is happening to me? To work, the Eye of Ra requires a human sacrifice. So my friends found another human to sacrifice. Me. Welcome to the human race. No.